Weather tight by winter, he said. Welcome back, it's the big barn build today. We're gonna get in a little bit more welding and framing around the front door. A bit of an explainer above the front door. Front door is set back, but above that sort of recess, we need to do some steel work. So we've got like a goal post going in. And we've got two components out of the three. I seem to have not ordered what I needed to. So we're gonna use 150 columns. I see these ones here. And we've got, they're about 2.5 metres high with a plate on the bottom. Uh, they're going to be bolted down and then in encapsulated in the wall. Dave's plating the bottom and that one over there. That kind of means we can just bolt in two uprights, carry on with our walling, and we can sit the top one on once we know that we definitely don't have any more vehicles to get in here. So we've got two of these uprights being made up. Uh, 12 on a plate for the bottom. Nice and beefy, all painted up, and we'll just hold off until we're ready to get these bolted down. Just where it comes through, there's a little sharpie mark there. So one each side, which still leaves about three meters in the middle to get in and out for access. It's a Monday, the sun's out. The big yellow toys are out. We've also got another toy to play with today which is a roller just gotta take it down a big slope now okay how does this work then oh. Rolls when it's unusual. May as well roll the ramp, I guess. So the button on top is what starts the vibration. Right, you may think I'm playing a time-lapse in reverse, but we're not uh, building a wall, we are destroying a wall. This is the short section between the garden room, but there's a couple of reasons why we're taking it down. It's only the top course really, but one reason is we are setting a low level threshold here for the sliding doors. I didn't have the spec at the time, so we left it level. We're probably gonna need to come down about 50 mil from floor level. But also, we've got the roller, so it makes sense to take it off now drive the roller in and then the 60 square meters we can compact with that rather than just using the plate compactor this is the first pass this hasn't even been vibrated yet um, but that's rolling in some of our own sand and gravelly bits just to blind off but we've got another about 19 tons tomorrow of screen sand so we'll start getting that in and blind it all off to the right level tomorrow
Good morning, we're back. Uh, yesterday was a, a success. We kind of got a hang of the roller. Right, first delivery is coming now, 7.15, early start. Uh, and it's insulation. We've got, I think it's about 100 sheets of insulation. Some of it's 150 mil thick. It's not an Arctic, big curtain-sided lorry. We should be able to get reversed in there. I think it's got a Moffat, you know, like its own telly, um, forklift on it. But I'll get our one out the right side of the lorry so it's ready as well. Interestingly, it's not used this company before. I think it's part of Travis, CCF, I think it's called. They just do insulation. The bloke turned up here a few weeks back, Daniel, to buy some chickens off us. And one thing led to another. And here we are spending thousands of pounds on insulation. So I think they just do insulation and dry lining. So they were able to beat our quotes from other merchants. So there you go. All, all things happen for a reason. Right, pigs done, chickens to do. And then we're on to lorries. When you'll notice that the old caravan's out, it's been in dry storage for about a year. Uh, we got it out because we wanted to sell it. Good time of year to sell a caravan, it turns out. Not. And uh, it would turn out that there must have been an old leak above the top window at the front. And while there were loads of people interested, I'm not really going to like bodge it and sell someone a leaky caravan. So it's now being sold as a bit of a project for the winter. If anyone would like a caravan, it just needs a bit of work. If you want to take a step back 20 years, this is beautiful. All the mod cons, you know? Anyway, let me know if you're interested. Toes well, electric's fine, no rot. Just that front bit, it's gone a bit dodge. Thank you, morning. At long last, we are making progress. Yesterday was a bit of a iffy day when we weren't quite sure what we we're doing. We were just constantly looking at plans and changing things. But we've made a good start on drainage now. So Monday we had Phil, my brother here. So we got some of that rolling done, some of the leveling, and that was, that was good. And we actually did our test area, which is the garden room, and got it to a point where it's only 25 mil off. But let me show you where we are with drainage. I know it seems a bit odd, but we compacted all this end uh, and then we dug it up again. What I didn't want to do is go over with that massive roller right over these because they're not particularly deep. They will be, they're 400 down from finished floor level, but I, I just felt a bit worried, I guess, about vibrating really close to all this. So what we've done is we know all this is pretty good, uh, but we'll whack a plate over when we back backfill this with all the uh, drainage gravel. So we've got one run that comes out, we'll cut it off outside and we'll deal with all that in the future. But this is all set to the correct falls. We'll get rid of any of the sharp rocks and bits underneath. Get all that backfilled nicely. This one is, got, is a rest bend at the bottom and that's gonna go all the way up to upstairs. Uh, that's just serving a downstairs toilet that's in sort of this end of the building. Uh, and I think we're all good here, so that's nice. That's going to become a soil vent pipe, I think, at the top. Then while I was out getting some more fittings, uh, Tom was rolling these bays. So the three bays over in the annex, which is like the granny flat, which one day I'll probably be living in when I'm kicked out, or Joe and I will like, retreat to it when the kids take over. Um, it's not going to be 
fitted out for uh, uh, years but it still has to have a certain level of work done to it the walls the ceiling the roof the drainage and the wiring so almost finished i guess but we won't need to push on and decorate and fit it out drainage is going in so for this one it's one long run uh, and it picks up on uh, an ensuite here a bathroom there and a utility sink at the other end so it's one that's where all these lintels line up one long stretch and hopefully that's going to be nice and easy there's a vent pipe up this end far corner is a kitchenette so that is got its own little lintel it's just a straightforward run elbow with soil pipe rather than taking 40 mil waste out through the wall into a gully or whatever we've just gone soil pipe under the slab everywhere and then finally last but not least the kitchen this we dug ages ago but that's going to be island uh, a pipe coming up for the island and then a tea uh, a pipe dropping down into it underneath the kitchen sink and then lastly i'll explain what tom's doing here digging up all the hard work so he is digging out to where we put a concrete duct through our wall here this one's cracked but you know one of these big concrete drains that i found that is in here cast in it's sealed each end with a bag can i see it well the footing's not that deep yeah i can see it i put i stuffed a feet bag in it i'm sure there he is that's a big enough pipe that we can run two ducts through it so we can bring in services from this side of the building uh, into the plant room Right, I think I found it. Pulled the bag out. See if we can see daylight. We'll get the ducks through, and then of course we want to make sure we seal it to rodents and stuff like that. But the ducks, I think if we we do two runs, water, power. I know they're not colour coded; they're all black, but. We'll label them up both ends. Uh, so they come up and then we'll leave the excess on the outside here. You can, you can join ducting, but it's gonna be easier to put the join outside. While we're over here with the digger, we're gonna dig in the annex, kitchenette. Managed to just squeeze in the dumper. It's getting a bit big for this sort of job now. And we've got the lintel, the lintel's just behind the cab of that digger. Yeah, as long as we have a go before you go. Yeah. Home, because I think it's a two-person <laughs> job. So, that, so it? difficult, isn't it? One man. <laughs> right, we have ploughed on with the drainage, trying to make the most of the last half an hour with two of us, because it's going to be difficult. These long lengths, we're trying to push them in. It's just easier having two people. So we started off down here. Uh, we've got a block on our level as well, but we know we need 
um, a 60 mil fall between each steel. So this ends okay. Start putting it underneath and we'll just lift the, or we'll put it over the top and then lift the pipes until we're happy. We will get gravel all the way in there, but just every two meters or so, we're just getting a blob in. Just make sure there's no big stones. Can you see this spec gap here? Yeah. That's what you're going to fill with your gravel. All right. You can tip your bucket in if it's easier. I can't lift it. If I hold the handle, and you can just tip, you tip the bucket. No, just hold the bottom. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, we we'll just give it a little jiggle. been a varied couple of days and I feel like we didn't really film too much of it but let me give you a walk around show you where I am and what the priorities are today so this week started out with getting the roller delivered and the roller is kind of one of the final stages of the groundwork before we get up that last wall at the front there and it becomes Kind of impassable by vehicles now of course this project is being a little bit larger than our previous renovations and therefore we've been able to use machinery for a huge amount of the project um, whereas in the past i've just been there with a spade and a wheelbarrow so it's a bit of a been a bit of a learning curve but as soon as you realize how efficient you can be with the right gear you soon realize that you know you've got to work the project around in certain order so you can actually keep those machines in here for the longest amount of time possible and therefore things like getting these beams in we probably could have held off a few more weeks uh, because we can't get the forklift through here can't really take the new dumper through there unless i unbolt the roll bar uh, so we haven't made too many hiccups uh, but it's it's good to be able to get most of the machines in still anyway we wanted to be able to get the roller in before that front door went in because the wacker plate yes you can lift it over but that I can't lift over, well, not easily. So using the roller, it's just gonna get a much better compaction than we would be able to with our little whacker plate. It's, it's a fairly decent whacker plate and we're still gonna need it around the edges, still gonna need it around the drains, but the roller is far superior. The current state of play is everything has got type one down as it has for a long time. And we've been getting those levels closer and closer to where they need to be about for us we've been getting them to about 60 mil below finished floor level or not finished floor level before, below dpm and the reason for that is we need 40 to 50 millimeters of sand blinding before our dpm but we want to 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 account for little dips and bumps and bits around the edges or where stones are large and things like that we want to use maybe 20 25 mil of our own home home brew, our own home blend sand, which is what I quarried out when we dug the pool. So that sand is what I've just filled up in the dumper. And I'll show you how it's coming out. Now, realistically, we could have used this for nearly all of it, all the way through the sand blinding. Um, but stupidly, I kind of put it onto the type one and then stones got mixed into it. However, it, it's pretty good, the smallest stones in it are probably the same sort of size as drainage gravel so when you roll it there's not really anything sharp poking through but i don't 
I wouldn't want to risk that being our final layer. Sand is coming in, I think, £14 a tonne, and I had a 19 tonne delivery of it. it. It could quite easily need two lorry loads if we were going to go 50 mil of that clean sand everywhere. And as soon as you've got a low spot, you end up using two or three times as much as you really need to. So using our own to get us closer is what I'm trying to do. And as you can see, that's what we've achieved here. So we are about 30 mil, a bit more at the edge, 30 mil left to, do, to go there. I've done it at the back. Now at the back, I can't get the roller in anymore. We've got the drains in, backfilled, and I'm happy to go over them with a plate compactor, but I definitely don't want to go over there with a roller. So they've got the P shingle, the drainage um, stone all the way around them. And then I've put some sand over the top and now we can get in and put the sand over the whole level. I can probably get a little bit of our homebrew in here and then I'll um, whack that in, but I'm happy with the whacker in there. The drainage was a big thing and we just had to focus and get on with it. So I don't know how much of that I filmed. Um, the, the long run, which serves the annex and a stack from upstairs, um, runs along here. We've taken out this last section here. It was all right, um, ready to go, but I realized I could just simply disconnect it. Props up over there on the pool. That means I can get in here with the roller, with the dumper, and more importantly, we've got to pour, mass fill this footing at the end of the pool. And in an ideal world, we would have poured the core of the pool and done all that, and then got that in there. But really, I don't want to rush the pool because we have to get the plumbing in before we can do the backfill and all this sort of nonsense. So we're going to brace that end wall really well and we're just going to pour only about half the height of that wall, still a couple of cube uh, of concrete in there, which will give us the footing so we can get this last run of wall in next week because I can't do the slab, the insulation, the concrete or anything in this area until the footing's in and the wall's up. We have rolled it, Tom did that before we did the drains, but that is now whacker territory. I can roll right up to the drainage on this side, uh, but I'm gonna whack that now. Well, I'm not gonna lie, it's a tiring job, this. God, there's only so much we can do with machines now um, because I can't get over these drains. Maggie, Maggie, that's not your invitation to leave. She gets the notification on my phone when the gate camera goes off and she knows someone's there. They're just leaving. But it is satisfying seeing it all getting level. I just need to move all this gear out of the way now. Um, needs to all go back to the workshop or shed or whatever it i don't even know what half of it is there's kids car seats in there all the plans i'm so glad we got these plans because they are getting used and abused and obviously they hold up to all that and the rain and chicken muck and everything
Well, I'm not sure what it looks like on the camera, but it's like someone just turned the lights out and all I can hear is thunder in the distance. So uh, that might be the doomed end of the video. We've managed to bring in, I would guess, 30 tonnes or so of our sand from down there. And I think it was a good option. We saved loads uh, of what we would have had to bring in, yet not really compromised anything. We're still putting probably 30 to 40 mil of the clean um, screen sand that we just got. So that's going to give us the perfect base ready for blinding. We've just got to hope that we don't end up with loads of driving rain coming in now and making a mess of it. I don't think it will. And we've still got time to perfect uh, the finish or the levels I should say before the insulation goes on. So the stuff we're going to have to put down next, which I might just battle on and put a pile in somewhere in the middle there. What I don't want to do is dump a load of this, I call it expensive sand because I'm frugal and stingy, but uh, I don't want to dump loads of this in the middle. And then when we go to move it with the dumper, end up digging deep, too deep and churning it up. Yeah. I also don't want to, mess around putting any uh, boards down so I, I think it's probably worth doing getting it in there keeping it dry that said a lot of stuff rolls better when it's slightly damp this is slightly damp um and the roller has the a tank on it so it can actually water feed on top of the as you're rolling uh, probably better if you're rolling that stuff and you didn't want the dust flying in the air and it would help it bind whereas the sand i don't think it's necessary we're not actually looking to vibrate the sand too much it's more about getting it evenly compressed down because remember our insulation is sitting directly on the sand right before i go i need to uh, explain a new little video format that we've got planned um, we are approaching six months of, into the build <laughs> it probably doesn't look like it to you lot um, but six months from when we kind of started and remember the first two months was demolition rather than breaking around. But we've gone back through the archives and Joe started compiling a monthly video. So when it eventually catches up with ourselves, at the end of each month, we'll do a, a, a month big barn build, um, start to finish type thing of what was achieved that month. But uh, when it comes to the uh, earlier months, we're gonna play catch up. So March, March slash April, I think it is, is our first video and we're going to put that out probably on Sunday evening and uh, it might have confused you if I hadn't mentioned that so that'll be our catch-up video which is basically going to remind you how it all started and probably be a bit more sped up maybe a bit of a voiceover but all the action I'm going to leave it there thanks for watching remember if you can do it yourself and we'll see you next time oh it's too late oh damn it Just come to put a foam in a couple of blocks. It's happened again. The dog's out here somewhere. Lucky we're not pouring concrete slabs today. Oh yeah, that is, that's flowing. Good way to check our fall on our lawn. Kind of going the right way. Weather tight by winter, he said. <laughs>